when three loud, fast knocks came from the door. <laughs> Are you going to say three loud farts? <laughs> no. <laughs> the silence was deafening. He quickly opened the folded doors, but only slightly. He jumped back, expecting there to be a dog. Confused, he looked back at his buddy with a shrug before leaning in further. <laughs> My dad has mates like that. One's called Kitchen Carl. He only does kitchens. <laughs> Welcome to episode 47 of Ghost Hunt. I've just spat everyone. That's disgusting. Ghost Hunt. Well, we're basically in the same situation as we were last time. We've got John Lennon today. Elton last week. Peace and love, guys. That was not John Lennon. Yoko, bring me. Yoko, get out of that fucking bed. You lazy bitch. Yoko, get out of the bin. Why are you in the no, bin? Yoko, okay. change your fucking pants, yeah? No, yo, no, George Harrison. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. What? Can't, where was he from? <laughs> Jamaica? <laughs> George Harrison. <laughs> George Harrison. What kind of accent's that? Harrison. <laughs> they weren't very Liverpudlian, were they, really? Not that Liverpudlian. No, I just can't. I call you Skelly Twice, you fuck off, aren't we, Dad's arsehole? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh, wow. For those of you who don't want the ASMR... Sorry, um, I just snorted. Um, so, welcome to episode 47. So, this week, um, my eyes are still fucked, and I've got um, another pair of sunnies on. And yeah. Do you want to hear a nice, wholesome story about these sunglasses? Oh, go on, yeah. So, when me and Johnny went to Barn on the Farm, a festival, mm. which I, I spoke about before, yeah. um, he bumped into this guy from school, right. and... He hadn't seen him in ages and he was called Ryan. He is still called Ryan. And he's not dead. Is he dead? No. And he's this lovely gay guy. I don't want a story unless someone ends up dead. No, he's just he was great. And we oh. uh we really got on and it was just one of those like, you know, impromptu things where he was like, I'm gonna try on your sunglasses. I tried on his and then we were like, I tell you what, as a little keepsake and a memory of the festival, I was like, I'll take yours, you take mine. And then every time Aww. I wear them off, I'll think of you. Isn't that sweet? That's, so, I think he wants to get in your pants. No, gay, Ryan. Oh. Um, yeah. Maybe he wants to get in Johnny's pants. Yeah, well, yeah. So, well, he can. <laughs> hey, off, off you go. Fuck off, <laughs> right. Um, no, that's a really nice story. Yeah, and he was lovely and we really got I'd on. I'd be really annoyed about that, though, if mine were, like, really nice sunglasses and his were shit. Well, do I miss... It's my yellow ones. I think you quite oh, like... No. I'm, well... I think that if, like, you, no. if you do a swap with someone, you've got to be feel like you've given away something that's a bit of a tug, but you've got something good as well. I really like these. I'm devastated. Are you devastated about the yellows? I'm more devastated that if you were going to give them away, you could have given them to me. What would you have given me in return? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, see, this is why I haven't done no, that. No, hang on. I would give you a um, Don't say big like a... sense of self-worth. <laughs> Don't need that. I'd give you one of my Penhaligon scent libraries. Oh. That's pretty good, isn't it? Well, Penhaligon... 30 quid, that is. I, have... I think it's quite a bargain. I, I don't get on with the small ones because then it makes me... I, I want the big ones and I, just I can't like, afford but, them. Well, I don't know which one I want, so I thought I'll get that. Treat myself. And then Chelsea I'm going to get Adam to buy me one. For, yeah, that's about 150 They're quid. a lot. I actually um, splurged for uh, my birthday on um, a perfume called Morning Chess. And it's like... Oh, you told me about that. Uh, I just had to because I was like, I love it. And I was like, you know what? How much was it? Mm, about 130 quid. How big is it? 50 mil. <gasps> Oh fuck! It's a lot, but you know what? There is so I I fucking love perfume, like the smell of things. Yeah. I've got that um, Molten Brown Blissful Temple Tree, and I'm I'm always <sighs> sniffing myself. Molten Brown Blissful Temple Tree. Always sniffing myself because I just I just lo I, I love it, yeah. and I'm I, I'm so excited. Just do sit you have a of... scent like especially on like a guy that you're like? Oh. Yeah, do you know what? And it's Tom Ford's the leather one. Oh, fuck me. Do you know that Neroli Paroli <gasps> one is really fucking delicious? Neroli Paroli? Neroli Paroli. What's that, like ravioli scented? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neroli Sm Paroli ravioli. <laughs> it smells of Uncle Ben's. <laughs> <laughs> you know I the difference man between pasta smells... and rice, don't you? <laughs> if he smells a mint, I'm in. <laughs> 
Three day old shepherd's pie, let's go. <laughs> Get in my pants, love. <laughs> um, um, no, Tom Ford's... Uh, what is it? A Tuscan leather, is it called? That one is really nice. Jesus. That will get that gets me like it must send me back to a time. Mm. I, I've tried. I've bought Adam um, the Dolce and Gabbana one because he doesn't really. I mean, he doesn't smell. He smells I love quite that you fresh. Didn't buy him the one that makes you like. Was that so expensive? Oh. And it was at the airport, and I wanted to just buy him a gift because I was coming back from Ibiza after a gig, and I was like, I'm going to buy him a little gift. Right. And um, they didn't have the Tom Ford. I, I'm, I'm going to buy him the Tom Ford one because it's, it's it's gushing. Uh, <laughs> that's. <laughs> Grotesque. Um, no, it's really fit. I bought him Dolce & Gabbana the one because I do like that one as well. Um, but he won't fucking wear it. Like, he smells fresh. He does mm. shower. Oh, good for him. And he doesn't smell a shit. Give him a medal. But he doesn't wear aftershave. And it really upset because I, lo- yeah. I, I, you know, I love with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Famously. That old thing. Famously. I do, I love with it. my nose. And I can't, it's very annoying to me. Well, it's all pheromones, isn't it? You probably are attracted to his natural scent, if I'm honest. There's a perfume called Ceruti, is it Ceruti 1889? It's not an expensive perfume at all. And I don't know if it's that nice, but it just, it takes me back to a moment in time. It's like I'm in a, it's like I'm time travelling. Mm. Like I just go, oh, shh. Yeah. You know, like in that So Raven when she's getting a, a vision. Uh, I don't know what that is, but what? I ratatouille when he eats the ratatouille. Exactly it. Yeah. But hang on, you've not seen that so raven. That's so raven. It's the future I can see. That's so raven. And she goes, um, you little nasty. <laughs> like that. <laughs> you little nasty. It's on Disney Channel. You have to watch it. Uh, I don't have Disney Channel. You have to watch oh, You haven't got Disney Plus? Uh, no. How do you watch Only Murders in the Building? What? I'm going. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah. I'm okay, well, you know what? This is what I've always you wanted. Like, podcasting with Susie. I, this is my dream come true. Bye. Um, You've oh, not she's watched back. Only Murders uh, in the Building. I thought I'd watch Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> is this thing on? I'm so. You are missing. Only Murders in the Building is your perfect show. Really? It's funny. It's got Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, who's, ma- who's um. mesmerizing in it. And it's 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 a who done it, and it's got Paul Rudd in, it's got Meryl Streep, it's mental. It's a series. Yes, oh. it's phenomenal. Uh, just when they pack it full of celebrities, like the murder on the Orient Express, I start to go oh, a bit I like. I oh, see, it's not for me because it's just it so really celeb packed. But I'm like, this is all a bit of a farce. And I a bit do. Of a f- this is project. funny though, and they're very good. I like, very, I like it's Steve funny Martin. and it's creepy. It's the ghost ones. Okay. Basically, Steve Martin, Martin Short's amazing. Is it SAS who dares wins though? <laughs> if you talk about that one not, more time, not I am going to fist myself so, into oblivion just so that I die. Wow! Because that's, gushing. That's the most annoying TV show. Oh fuck it! I, I'm, I, I can't talk about how obsessed I am. Oh, but I, there's my uh, uh, my agent said that I'm, he's going to try and get me on uh, Love Island. <laughs> what? <laughs> not the actual show. <laughs> I said that to Adam last night. He went, "What are you talking?" Uh, just the after show. What do you mean? You know the after the after sun, right? Where they talk about yeah what's happened. But I'm going to have to if I do that, I'm going to have to watch Love Island. Yeah, unfortunately, I yeah. I pretend that you love it, but I don't. Maybe I don't have to pretend. Maybe I can just watch it and be like, "This is dog shit." As in, you do those talking heads things, or like no, you do, you just you know you know like um, I don't watch it. So did you ever watch Big Brother? Mm. Or The Apprentice, you're fired. Oh, I see. So you go on after so you're like a little about, guest. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah, a little yeah, guest. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. So I'm going to have to start watching that shit if that happens, but I really hope mm. that that doesn't happen. I'm sorry for you if that does Thank happen. You. That's just shit, isn't it? Yeah. It's just awful. It's just morally wrong. Grim, hate, grim, so grim, yeah. grim. Well, I will do anything for money. Anyway. Anyway. Would you like to do a tarot? Yeah. Would you like to do a tech tarot? Yes, please. Oh, <laughs> was that you, John? <laughs> oh my God! That Maybe weird. what we should do oh. today is get us try and contact John Lennon John. through the through the medium of pendulum. Pendulum. I don't have the pendulum. No, you don't, because I've got it. Ooh. Right, hang on. Let me find. Pass it over then. I'm finding it. Yes, slag. We've been chatting for twenty. Oh God. <laughs> We're going to get fucking roasted in the comments. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, my God, what's happened here? My phone's changed language. It's now in Espanol. 
Espanol. Uh, tarot, pick a tarot.com. I speak Spanish, so that's not a problem for me. Pick a tarot free, because I'm absolutely not paying. Here you go. Chuck it. Chuck it more. <laughs> what? Why can't you reach? Jesus. Your legs haven't broken. Ow. Your... What is going on? <laughs> My hip hurts. When I just said your legs haven't broken, you went, ow! Yeah, you leg. gave me a little pain there. It was like You're a, a witch. voodoo doll. Witch, witch, witch. I really want to go to witch school. What do I do now? Tap Press, the deck. Tap the deck, yeah. This is ridiculous. Oh, you the one that forgot the tarot cards. Get my reading. Here we go. I didn't forget them. Well, I did forget them, but... Oh, okay. Uh, how Susie we feel... did this whole, like, um... She was like, I'll go to Ealing tomorrow and get them if I have to. I was like, obviously you can't get to fucking Ealing. Yeah, I mean, we'll I'm really glad cards. we agreed, but that didn't have to happen. Yeah. Okay, how we feel about the podcast, judgment. Oh, God. You feel this is an end to an era, or at least a certain phase of your life. You're taking stock and looking where you want to go from here. The ending is not one for regret, but for rejoicing. Soon you will enjoy the rewards for your past efforts. Christ. So what do you think that means, then? Because it can't be the podcast. How you feel about it? an end We're to an era or a phase of my life? I mean, to be honest, I have picked this, and I am in a new phase of my life, and it is coinciding with pod. New living and, situation, and ta exactly. Tarot being left behind. Yeah, like it's it's that. Um, number two, what you want most right now, and it's, it says the here for fan. <laughs> so excuse me. <laughs> What was that? that sounded Basically, racist. there's someone here that looks like Nigel Farage sat on a throne, giving it a saucy look to the camera. Oh, fair. Or like, let me see. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> no, it says the here off of pant. I can't say that much. The off of pant. Hi, hero fant. Right. Right now, you want to have someone around you that you can trust and confiding, knowing they won't let you down. There are moral issues here, knowing right from wrong, and you may feel that you need some advice or wise counsel from a teacher, priest, parent, or someone you have a lot of respect for in order to help you make the right decision. That's me. You're my priest. I'll join your cult. I'll be a priest. I think I'd be a pretty good priest. This is about the fears. Priest. Priest. Someone's heart is ruling their head. You're so afraid of being hurt, you will remain paralysed in non-action. <gasps> to have or not to have, to stay or to go. Throw caution to the wind, great happiness awaits if you can trust what you feel and ignore the fear and do it anyway. It's a bit late though, isn't it? And that's called The Lovers. This is so apt. I'm sorry. It's weird, The tarot is getting weirder yeah, and weirder as we go. What is going for you? Strength. Brave heart. It says, your self-confidence and courageous... <laughs> <laughs> That's a film. Braveheart. Oh, you've got a kilt on as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, be patient and... Be, be, <laughs> be patient and compassionate, self-disciplined and strong, and you will reap great rewards for your courage. Oh, lovely. What's going against you? The hermit. <laughs> I just pointed straight you at literally Hannah. pointed at me. The hermit. The hermit. Unfortunately, the hermit. You are at risk of doing something hasty out of impatience and rage. Oh, absolutely. 100%. That's this is me. not time for irrational and impulsive behaviour. Don't oh. be cantankerous if closer to old than young or arrogant and resentful if closer to young than old. Try and remain... It's told you not to be arrogant twice now. <laughs> Try I thought remain. this was about you. Mm, you just made it the We're hermit. both quite arrogant. Yeah, try um, and remain calm and let the rage go. I just need to say one thing to you, you yeah. one day. <laughs> She's missed out. Take time to make a cool and collected decision. The hermit signals a warning not to make hasty decisions. Okay, and then card six, the likely outcome justice justice will be done yes decisions will go in your favor particularly regarding partnerships or legal matters now oh. is the time for some good luck and reward your good deeds in the past i really love that great jesus <laughs> that's Pain's how you do broken. it um that sounds great actually that's great yeah. you should be thrilled it's a, with that. it's a really lovely reading and i'm going to read you a bloody story. I'm Are you so ready? Excited. Hit me with a story. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Does he have sunglasses on as well? Um, who? Whoever sung that song. Who sung that song? Shall I sing it? Hit me with. Hit me. Hit, hit me, me. Hit me with hit your me, rhythm hit stick. Hit me. Hot me. Hit me with your rhythm stick. So this was by the Blockheads. Oh, Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Has Ian Jury got... If Ian Jury wears glasses like these... He does not, unfortunately. 
Well, I mean, you might have done before, but anyway, okay. I was <clears> dead. <throat> oh. Got Very it. sad. Okay, here we go. Um, do I look less funny than the those sunglasses? Um, Can you get into it? You look less funny, but just as moronic and mad. Yeah, yeah. cool. That's that's my vibe. Here we go. <clears throat> I don't have many memories of my father because he died when I was just eight years old. However, I do clearly remember the night several years later when he let us know that he was still around and still watching over us. First of all, you need to know something about my father. He was fascinated by the supernatural and by the possibility of some sort of existence after death. After it became clear that he would soon lose his battle with lymphatic cancer, he told my mother not to worry. If there's any way for me to reappear after I die to let you know that I'm okay, he said to her, then that's what I'm going to do. I'll visit you and the kids all the time. It's going to be so cool. My mother said her response to that was a pointed and succinct, don't you fucking dare. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) It wasn't that she didn't care what happened to him after he died or that she didn't want him watching over us. She just knew she wasn't going to be emotionally capable of dealing with that situation. Also, why can't ghosts just be like... Oh no, but I like not not like a ooh, not like a scare well, the shit he, out he of hasn't you. said he wants to scare them. He's just like I'll be there to let you know I'm yeah, around. But no, no one has ever been like oh, a ghost just knocked on the door. Yeah, well, let's see. Um, <clears throat> she just knew she wasn't going to be emotionally capable of dealing with that situation, and she promised him that's how she would react. My father followed through on this promise, though. (laughs) The story my mother told us was that she was in their upstairs bedroom a few months after his death, thinking about him and crying because she missed him so much. Then she suddenly had the distinct feeling that she was being watched. Oh, God. She turned her head and saw my father standing outside the bedroom window on the balcony, clear as day. He looked healthy and alive. He was wearing a bright blue suit and he gave my mother a look that said, is it okay if I come inside? My mother said she stared at him for a moment in total shock. She deliberately blinked her eyes to make certain that she really was seeing what she was seeing. And when she opened her eyes, he was still there, smiling and waiting. That's when my mother followed through on her promise. She closed her eyes tightly and said out loud, I can't handle this, I'm sorry, but I need you to go away and please don't ever do this again. After about 10 seconds, she opened her eyes, and this time he was gone. This next part of the story takes place a few years later, and I have to set the scene for you. I took a bad fall while playing soccer, and the impact totally destroyed my shoulder. I broke it in two places, and every ligament and tendon was torn. The reason this is important to the story is this. My shoulder hurt so bad that I couldn't easily walk up the stairs to my bedroom, which was across the hall from my parents' bedroom. I was temporarily sleeping in the guest bedroom downstairs and my brother had the bedroom we shared all to himself. That bedroom was right above the guest bedroom. In the hallway, outside the guest bedroom, there was a sideboard with shelves on top and drawers below and on those shelves was an old mantel clock. It looked like someone... It looked a lot like someone cut off the very top part of a typical grandfather clock and it was small enough to fit neatly on a shelf. The clock had to be wound every so often with a special key, which was kept in one of the drawers below. And when it was properly wound, the small pendulum would swing back and forth to keep the clock going. My dad loved this clock, and while he was still alive, he made sure to wind it so that it never stopped. After his death, though, my mother never wound the clock again, and it eventually stopped. So this clock had been completely silent for years. Late one night, I was trying to go to sleep, but the pain of my injured shoulder was keeping me awake. Plus, as a kid, I had terrible anxiety. Even with the bedroom door closed to help me feel more secure, I wasn't comfortable sleeping in the unfamiliar surroundings of the guest bedroom and being the only person downstairs. Just as I was finally feeling like I might be able to sleep, I heard something in the hallway outside the bedroom door. I was immediately freaked out and wide awake because my mother and my brother were still upstairs. The stairs in this house were very squeaky and I knew for a fact I'd not heard anyone walking down them. It sounded as though someone or something was messing around with the sideboard. First, I heard a drawer open and then shut. After that, I heard a loud click, followed by a strange sort of grinding sound. Then there were a couple more clicks and suddenly the clock that hadn't made a sound in years started ticking. 
That sound I heard before wasn't grinding, it was winding. Someone took the key out of the drawer, opened the clock, wound it and started the pendulum. Apparently, they also put the key back in the drawer where it belonged, because that's where we found it later. At this point, 11-year-old me was not only wide awake, but I was also scared as hell as high and... I was also scared as hell and hiding as far beneath my covers as I could go with a broken shoulder. After all, when you're a child, covers are magical and they repel all things evil, right? The next thing I heard was someone walking up the stairs. Then everything was quiet for a short while. Soon though, I heard footsteps moving around all over the upstairs. I even heard someone directly above me open and close the creaky sliding closet doors in my bedroom. Creaky. <laughs> Did I say queaky? Yeah. Queaky! <laughs> queaky, queaky kittens! <laughs> the queaky doors! <laughs> the creaky and the queaky ones. Um, open and close the creaky sliding closet doors in my bedroom. After that, I clearly heard footsteps come down the stairs and someone opened and then closed the door to the guest room where I was struggling to breathe inside my deep, dark covers cave. Soon after that, the footsteps returned up the stairs and finally, all was silent, except for one thing. The clock continued with its relentless Eventually, sleep caught up with me and I didn't wake until my mother came to check on me in the morning. While we were eating breakfast that morning, my mother looked at me and paused for a long time. Finally, she said, Were you up and walking around last night? I told her I was not and then I described to her all the noises I heard. My mother told me she heard noises during the night too and she searched all over the house to see who it was. It was her walking all around upstairs, opening and closing the squeaky closet, coming down the stairs, opening and closing the guest bedroom door and going back up the stairs again. So who made the other sounds we both heard first, we wondered? And why was the clock ticking? Suddenly my mother's eyes grew wide. Oh my goodness, she said. Last night was the anniversary of the night that your dad died. I think it must have been him trying to let us know that he's still watching over us. And with that, we both went to look at the clock, which was still ticking. Thanks, Dad. Message received. We love you too, and we miss you. Oh, I mean, she did tell him not to come back. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, I wind the clock, though. Classic man thinks he knows best. <laughs> oh, that was very sweet. I know. Oh. He just wants a little imprint. I Yeah, I don't know what... Oh, no, Have I you listened to the latest Uncanny? Sense. Uh, Uncle yes. Jack. Yes, I have. Okay, can we discuss it? Yes, yes we can. Um, I fucking love Uncanny. I love I Uncanny love. too. Oh, it's on the telly now, isn't it? And oh my 18th, God, shout 18th, out to 13th. my mate Jen, who said that she listened to Uncanny through being a huge Ghost Hunts fan. Oh, do you know what, Danny Robbins? You're welcome. <laughs> we've got, we've got a convert And if you want to give us fan. some of that 222 cash dollar... Um, we'll take it. But yeah, Jen, Jen, my, my mate Jen was saying that she started to listen to Uncanny and she was like, it is so camp. And I was like, she's oh, it right. Is. Yeah, it is. It's but the campest book. Yeah, it is. It, because, mostly because of Danny Robbins' um, Danny Robbins is his narration and yeah. how skewed he is to being like, but then... God, Jenny, that sounds awful. What happened next? Yeah, he's so great. He's, he's so amazing. charismatic. I love the way he says his S's as well. It's like, it's, 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 I know. God, what, I mean, what could happen next? They, what you He's like, what? And then he hears I from the person it. who's sceptical and then he goes, yeah, but I would say that that does sound like an imprint. And you're like, nah, well, yeah, well. Is it, is, it's going to be quite difficult to, to explain that though, isn't it? Oh, it was quite mm. good. Stanley Robbins. That's no shade, by the way. I'm not taking the piss. No. He is the best. He's a, obviously an incredible storyteller. He is. You know someone that we know He's passionate knows about Stanley it. Robbins? Who? I'll tell you after. Oh, someone that we know Telepathically knows. send it to me. Go on. I mean, imagine, just go. Have you got it? Uh, I just think Pete Basley. <laughs> it's not Pete Basley. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Adam, uh, my, just my boyfriend Adam has a, because he's a comedian as well, has a comedian friend called Peter Basley. And Susie and my brother Harry are absolutely, I mean, club. I am as fan club. I, I They are cult. the biggest fan club of Pete Basley. So shout out Pete Basley. Susie's absolutely obsessed. Oh, obsessed. Um, God love him. Um, no, it's not him. But anyway, um, the latest he's episode. Just man, he's just amazing. The latest episode is. I think I need to re-listen. To be honest, just to. Okay, it's called Uncle Jack, and it's about um, this haunted house in Cornwall, yeah. and it, like, and it's about a thundery they rainy night. They were building, night. weren't they? They were building on the house. Yeah, and I just. 
It's hard, isn't it? Because I'm like, I want to speak like for me, uncanny is too short. I, I feel I, I love it so much. I want it. I want it to be an hour and a half. Yeah. I want to speak to everyone Certainly who was not, there yeah. that night. Yeah. I want to speak to the people who ran away when they were got scared. Absolutely. Like I, I just, I'm so intrigued uh, by the yes, stories. Completely. Um, but uh, I want the book. And I think oh, we should yeah. do a watch along to the. Um... I would love that. Would you a Patreon watch along? Yeah. I I think we should. Do we'll get that. together. Come to my new flat. Yes. Uh, in Cali, and just let's watch it. I. We'll... It's so perfect, Uncanny. It's like everything about it has the elements that I like about spooky yeah. shit. There's always a house. There's always something. There's always noises. There's always sounds. There's always things being thrown. There's always. It's just very comfortable, but also absolutely terrifying. Like that Harry called episode mm. was terrible. Anyway, go and listen to Uncanny because it's fucking. My favourite ones are when they're um uh like engineers or pilots or they're yeah. like cuz some Bloody of them, some of them sound a bit kooky <laughs> and and it make and when I, when he like describes them and he's like they've got long winding hair and yeah, yeah, crazy yeah, glasses yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, yeah. like I already am a bit like <laughs> okay that's just an uncanny fan <laughs> and they're like this story Danny I'm here with, <laughs> you know I'm here with Kevin he's a very handsome guy he's got a rainbow suit on and a, and a hat with a penis on top he's <laughs> a very like, not yeah, much is going okay. on for him so well, he just is, yeah well Kevin is a Fruit Loop, but no, I I agree. There was that one at the end of the last season with with the woman and the family, and there was that little girl that they brought back from France. Yeah. France, France. <laughs> oh! <laughs> if that didn't jump scare you, I don't know what. <laughs> but some of those, I'm like, well, then the fucking real. But it's like Adam's mum saying about a monk. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if I see a monk walk through this room now, I'm yeah. a believer. Do you know? Um, uh, my mum shouted toss pot at me when she found cigarettes in my funny, um, thingy. Yes. Toss pot, toss pot. Um, she actually says in the house in Ealing, um, she, every now and then she'll get a really, really strong smell of tobacco. Oh. And she thinks that someone who used to live in the house is just smoke. having a cig outside. Well, she was the secret smoker. So she, she, yeah, she's the, she, she's the OG toss pot, really. Is it an, has it got a fire? We've got a fire, no. open fire. And the neighbours um, mm. don't smoke and the neighbours are away on the other side. But also it's like a, yeah, it's really weird. And she says every now and then she'll be walking up to the attic and she'll Why just Why is she going up to the attic, the creepy bitch? Wow. Sorry, Lucy, I didn't mean that. <laughs> well, why are you yeah, going to the are attic, you, Lucy? Why are you going to the attic, Yeah, Lucy. Lucy. Uh, she'll probably just get away from my dad. Oh, fine. Yeah. Uh, preach, sister. Preach. Um, okay, do you want to hear part two? Yes. Oh, yeah, Max. And, Max. And the little kid. What was her name? Um, Bella. Bella. Blind Bella. Blind Bella. I mean, I'm blind. Um, right oh, uh, Lucy and Yuck have sent me some pajamas, but I think I'm going to wear them on the pod. I think I'm just going to wear them. I'm going to wear them like with some high heels and like a little top on your rugs. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, cute. Very Big cute. Fun. Okay, um, that's my mum opening up my parcels. Okay. Uh, well, oh, she's just going to take me. I love how regressed time. we are. We're like, mum, I'll open my parcels. Yeah, she's. Oh, listen, <laughs> when you move back in with your parents, it's so. My mum was like, um, "Do you want me to wash your bedding while you're away?" And I was like, "Yes, please." <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, it's a jailbird. Bloody hell! Um, I can't believe I'm ooh, going back to Ealing. That's part one. Now you're gonna talk. You listen. You're gonna. Can uh, anyone that listens to this podcast that's about living with the parents? Can you please send us an email and tell Susie how fun it is? All your horror stories to get me out quicker. Mm, yeah, that may happen. <clears throat> okay. It, so what? basically what happened before was we'd had all the things, like people were, she could hear all the noises, she, that, that chipmunk. There was a chipmunk in the attic. Then her daughter's got a, an imaginary friend called Max, who seems a bit yeah. freaky, bit basically, of a Basically, it's a house... By the woods, yeah. the mum has discovered that her yeah. daughter Bella is talking to an imaginary friend called Max. I imagine it looking like, you know that house out of Hide and Seek? Don't tell me you've never seen the film Hide and Seek, Susie, I nope. swear to God. <laughs> With um, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Okay, you, are, you call yourself a ghost, hon. You should be ashamed of yourself. No. Um, and then Damon. she said, so everything went back to normal, she's fine, until one day everything changed. That's Robert De Niro's off. in a horror film. Yes. 
It was just after, <laughs> and that's it. It was just after lunch on a weekday and I was cleaning the dishes while my husband was at work and my daughter was upstairs playing. I was just thinking about what to make for dinner when I heard a knock on the front door. I was rather puzzled by this since we weren't expecting anyone, nor were we expecting any deliveries, but nevertheless, I dried off my hands and went to answer the door. But just as I made it to the door, I suddenly felt uneasy, as if someone was telling me not to open it. Instead, I looked through the peephole. There, standing just outside the door, stood a man with long, greasy hair. I say that because it was the first thing I noticed about him. Yeah, gross. Since it covered most of his face, he was wearing sunglasses. Oh my God, it's it me. It's Susie. It's me when yeah, I haven't when washed my hair. When was the last time you washed your hair? I washed it this morning, actually. I think you can tell because it's glowing. Well, I think you've left some shampoo in because it's very greasy. Someone described this hair colour of mine as antique rust. <gasps> the man had on a yellow and brown shirt. Oh. <laughs> I'm not really... Is this brown? It's 100% brown. Shut up. You need an eye test. Anyway, I made it up. <laughs> well, that, well, that's, no, the man has got sunglasses it's on. It's yellow and black, dickhead. Mm, it's very brown. I think it's because it's see-through. Mm, mm, okay, mm. making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Call Angela! <laughs> I'm blinking for Angela, but no one can see me. <laughs> Call Angela, I'm about to get spiked by that mad bitch in the corner. <laughs> he was wearing sunglasses and a long, dark green hoodie with the hood up. I immediately felt the hairs on the back of my neck standing at the sight of him. I knew right away that this man was up to no good. I remained silent as I watched him through the peephole. I thought that if I kept quiet, he would eventually go away. However, he continued to stand there by the door, moving his head from side to side, as if checking to see if anyone was watching. I wasn't sure what he was up to, but he didn't seem like he was going to move any time soon. He knocked once more, this time more aggressively. I didn't want Bella to hear the noise and came downstairs to see what was happening, so I decided to speak up. Hello? I called out, not opening the door. The man perked his head up and his body seemed to stiffen. Hello, ma'am, he said in a low tone. I'm from the repair company. I'm here because your husband called and said that there were some problems with the lights upstairs. I don't believe that. Could I please come inside? No, no, no the way. answer is no. I knew right away that was a lie. There was no electrical problem of any sort. I'm sorry, I said, but I think there's been a mistake. We don't have any problems with the lights anywhere. I could see the man getting agitated as he moved from one foot to the other, still looking to each side of the house. We got a call from your husband, Thomas, telling us to come in and have a look around. His voice was much lower now, getting more aggressive with each word. Mm. My heart was racing a million miles an hour now and my breath was starting to get heavy. He knew my husband's name. That means they must also know that he's not home. Oh, I hate that. Oh, home invasion. I steeled my nerves and called back to him. I know my husband didn't call you, I shouted as I gripped the doorknob jack tightly. I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but you need to leave right now. The man's features hardened and he was now furiously banging on the door. Open the door, he shouted, Shit. but I didn't back down. I'm calling the police. This seemed to do the trick as the man started backing away and headed towards what I can assume was his car. Feeling a sense of relief, I released my grip on the door and pressed my back against it, thinking that it was all over. Call the police, call the police. Yes, exactly. But just as I was going to calm myself, just as I was trying to calm down, my daughter came running down in a panic. Mommy! She cried. Seeing the fears in her eyes. Fears? Seeing the fear in her eyes, I quickly ran over and gripped her tightly. What is it? What's wrong? I said frantically. Bella wrapped her arms around me and began sobbing. Sobbing. <laughs> I've got a mucky mouth. <laughs> There's a man in the backyard! She cried. My eyes widened after hearing that. Max said he heard something, so I looked out of the window and there was a big, scary man out there. Oh. My breath started to tremble as I was beginning to panic now. There was no way that the man from before could make it to the backyard with the amount of time that he'd had. He's got an accomplice. He's got an accomplice. There had to be more than one. It's like home alone. This is horrid. Yeah. I held my daughter close as I looked frantically around the house trying to see if I could spot them. Just then, I heard a tapping on the kitchen window. Oh, fuck off. I looked to the kitchen and I saw him. Another man, wearing all black, but with shorter, but just as greasy hair as the first man. His face was all dirty and scabby. He was staring at his wide, bloodshot eyes. He was looking at us with the most sinister grin I'd ever seen. He licked his lips as he stared at my daughter with hungry eyes. Oh. Mm. Suddenly the front door was banging violently and I knew it was the first man trying to kick the door down. This is actually horrible. This is, uh, honestly, this has turned into the... the Horror of horror. I think Max is going to save the day. I, I think this, this is going is to be all be leading to being yeah. like, oh, you didn't like Max? Well, wait, it gets worse. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Max yeah, is yeah, actually yeah. all right. Max is the nice the guy. The guardian angel. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> Fuck. 
Oh, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, quickly, I grabbed my daughter and ran upstairs, but just as I reached the halfway, I realised with horror that I'd forgotten my phone in the kitchen. I was about to run back down to grab it when I heard glass breaking from the back door. No. It was too late to grab it. I picked Bella up and I ran into her bedroom. When Bella was younger, she was always exploring around the house and somehow managed to break both my bedroom and bathroom lock. Fucking hell, I've got the Hulk. <laughs> At least in my daughter's... Bella is hench. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mum! <laughs> I'll sort this out, don't you worry about it. <laughs> She's like a little builder. <laughs> right, a shortish crunch out. She's got a nickname like Bathroom Bella because she only fixes bathrooms. <laughs> My dad has mates like that. One's called Kitchen Carl. He only does kitchens. <laughs> I want to be Kitchen Carl. Kitchen Carl is so fun. Well, kitchen it's just a name. Carl. Kitchen Carl. I'll call Kitchen Carl. He won't, he won't do your toilets, but he will do your kitchen. So where are we with Bella Bathroom? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, we literally went to the kitchen. Yeah, no, fair um, enough. When Bella was younger, she was always exploring. Oh yeah, what would you um, be? What would you do? <laughs> Hefty Hannah. <laughs> what? No, but it has to be a thing Hefting, that you do. Lifting things up. Oh, okay. No, that's wrong, isn't it? No, that's not. It's, that's heaving, heaving Hannah. <laughs> Hefty, yeah, hefty, hefty heaving, hefty Hannah, hefty heaving <laughs> with heaving breasts. <laughs> That's something Richard no, Lehman said. What room would you I'd do? Be, um, I'd be... Hall, hallway Hannah? Hallway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be... Um, what would you be? Um, You'd have to be uh, Silicon Susie. You'd only do the bits in the filler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sauna Susie. Sa- what? what? How many? You Put the switch on. Because you're not going to have very much work, are you? <laughs> I only do saunas. I'm very niche. I'll only Sorry, work only in the, the Pyrenees. Hallway um, Hannah. Jesus. <laughs> Is that the only thing, the room that starts with a H? Are we Hallway, being an idiot? House. House Hannah. House Hannah. House Hannah. I'll do, I'll do the whole Homes thing. Homes under the hammer with Homes Hannah. Under the hammer Homes with under Hannah. the hammer. Oh, listen, that's the next That's the next logical step in my career. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Uh, you're lo- 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 lo. Okay, so all the locks are broken. At least in my daughter's room, there was a dresser close enough to the door that I could brace against it. I ran it. Oh, my God, that was horrible. I ran it. Gosh. I ran into the room with... Ba- it's getting me a bit thingy, this story. It's I'm absolutely really terrified. There's nothing worse to me than a home invasion story. I no, hate it's them. Because it's like them. you think that you're safe in your house. Yeah. With and, house and by Hannah. humans. Like, I, I, I understand yeah, paranormal is terrifying, yeah. but two men yeah. on either side trying to get in. Also, it seems like they're a bit drugged up. And like people Capable on drugs. Capable of anything. Terrifying. What was it? I heard something on like a true crime thing that was like... If someone's going to break into your house without know, knowing that you're in there, it's one of the most terrible, because they're not scared of anything. Right. They will fucking come in and they will absolutely murder you. So um, the best thing to do is have a bat by your bed. Sorry, oh, I thought you meant the animal. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure what that's going to be. Get a pet bat. Get a pet bat. In Margate, I, I, I realised when I woke up in the morning, I could see a... Um, a, a baseball bat in the corner of the in room. In Margate? Yeah, because... Um, it's my brother's ex-boyfriend. He's South African, and uh, uh, and he's like obviously that is some South African mentality where they're just mm, like you have, you have your arms. You need to have a weapon. Yeah, Jeez, and it was I really always... creepy seeing that. And I was like, oh wow! And I was like right at the top of the flat, and I was like, oh. I think my fight or flight must be a bit spun out because um, I like when I'm in bed, I'm like, oh, I get murdered, I get murdered, whatever. Really? No, 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 no. I, often I'm so tired that I couldn't give a shit. Homes under the hammer. If you got broken into and you really feared for your life, I bet you would fucking, you wouldn't just lie there and take it. Mm, I don't know. I'm you quite definitely, tired. No, I disagree. I, I think like, it, you know, you're something noise and would like, kick in yeah. and you would, because you, I've also, I've fucking seen what your reaction is. When, when you get scared, you fucking run for it. <laughs> Sod everyone else. Yeah, she's but I'm out. awake and I'm, I'm up. I'm not, I'm not like in bed knackered. No, no. I've, I've heard I've heard sounds in that house, and I'm like, eh, yeah. But it. I've slept in the same room as you, and you're like, Ugh! like you you would run, would I? I reckon. I hope so. You're a runner. I like to hope so. Yeah, you're a runner. First time anyone said that to me. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Let's go back in. That's Scary. Where, are we? <laughs> where was I? I look insane. Okay. I fucking lost it. Okay, so she's braced the dresser door against the door to try and stop the upstairs. Okay. Room. I ran into the room with Bella in my arms and placed her on the bed before quickly shutting the door and I shoved the dresser in front of it. After that, I went back to Bella and held her tight as we sat next to, as as we sat next to her bed at the opposite corner of the room. Bella was sobbing uncontrollably and I placed my hand over her mouth, though it didn't really seem to matter. And then in the end, they already knew we were in there. We could hear the men stomping up the stairs. Oh no, they're and in. And stopped in front of the door. Everything was quiet now. 
so quiet that I could feel my heart pounding in my ears. It was pounding so hard that I thought it was going to explode in my chest. Bella managed to calm down her sobbing, but she was shaking violently in my arms. This is horrible. We know you're in there, said one of the men. Come on out. We just want to play. Oh, fuck off. Just take my belongings, you creepy mm. cunt. Sorry, yeah. no cunt. No, that's, no, that's beep, fair enough. Mike, that's can you beep, beep that that's out? That's fair enough. Beep you out just say it twice. I know, I'm sorry. I'm very sweary in this <laughs> fine. No, this is No, mine. listen, this is, this is a very stressful situation. You can be forgiven. <laughs> Mommy, she whimpered. I held her tighter. Shush, it's just going to be okay. It's going to be okay, sweetie. Mommy's here. I knew it wasn't, though. These men were just outside the door, and neither the police nor my husband had any idea what was happening. We were all alone. I held my daughter's head close to my chest so that she wouldn't see the tears falling from my eyes. Mm. I heard the doorknob turn, and the door opened, but stopped once it hit the dresser in front of it. Now, knowing that something was blocking it, the men began screaming on the door with fury, causing Bella to scream. Let us in, they shouted. Don't make this harder on yourselves. With each bang against the door, the dresser was being pushed forward inch by inch. Go away, I screeched. Leave us alone. Bella was now screaming in my arms as she was holding onto me for dear life. Max, she called out to her imaginary friend. With one final push, the dresser fell over and the door was now opened. The two men slowly entered the room and I saw that each one of them was holding a knife. Fuck. Now then, said the man with the sunglasses. Oh, hang on. Now then, the man with the sunglasses said with a sickening grin, let's play. Oh. I knew this was it. There was nothing left to do. I held my daughter tighter than I ever had before and I found myself sobbing relentlessly. Please, I pleaded. The men just laughed at me as they stepped closer. They were just a few feet away and the black hooded man was about to reach for my daughter. This was it. They were going to kill me and take my daughter away. I wanted to move to fight them, but my body refused to move. I was petrified with fear. It felt like the night before Bella was born all over again. But this time, the danger was real and there was nothing I could do to stop it. For a moment, I thought about all the times I had with my family. I didn't want it to end. I needed to see my daughter grow up and get married to have a family of her own. But just like that, it was going to be all over. Just then, there was a light bang, causing everything to go silent. The two men looked around for whatever made that sound. Then there was another. It was tiny, but it was a scratching sound coming from somewhere in the room. The two men... That's just giving me, like, full-on goosebumps. The two men turned towards the closet where the scratches were coming from. I reluctantly took my eyes off them and looked towards the closet as well. It almost sounded like there was an animal trapped inside. If this is the chipmunk that's come back and saved the day, I'll die. <laughs> it's What's in there? <laughs> What's in there? The man in the green hoodie shouted. A dog! I don't know, I shouted back. I truly didn't know. Had an animal got inside during all the commotion? I had no idea what was happening. The man looked at his buddy. Check it out, he ordered. The second man slowly made his way towards the closet as the scratching continued. But just as he reached the doors, the scratching stopped. The silence was deafening. He quickly opened the folded doors, but only slightly. He jumped back, expecting there to be a dog. Confused, he looked back at his buddy with a shrug before leaning in further. It was at that moment, something grabbed his head and pulled him upwards. The force caused the doors to shut behind him as the man was now screaming from inside, along with a terrible growling and hissing. What the fuck? The green-hooded man shouted. What the fuck is in there? I didn't acknowledge him and kept my eyes glued to the closet doors as they shook violently. The screaming continued for what seemed like an eternity before, and then they finally stopped. There was nothing but silence. Just then... I saw a dark figure drop from the ceiling. I couldn't see it completely as my daughter's bed was blocking most of the view. All I could see was a dark hump from within the closet doors. Then it started moving, making its way out of the closet. From my peripheral vision, I saw the hooded man pointing his knife at whatever it was. Stay back, he shouted through all the... Co no. Stay back, he shouted. I kept my eyes on the dark thing coming out of the closet. From behind... Oh, hang on. I kept my... I swear to fucking God. I kept my eyes on the thing coming out of the closet until, from behind the bed, a long grey hand appeared, pressing against the floor. A long arm soon followed. I watched in horror as the dark figure from inside the closet fully revealed itself in the middle of the room. Max! Bella shouted happily. I looked down at my daughter in shock before looking back up at the creature. It looked like a man. Its skin was dark grey, its face and dark. 
and long its arms and legs were thin and long as well as its fingers which had long fingernails almost like claws but its head was what I noticed more it was larger and its bottom jaw was twice the side of a normal mouth I can't even imagine what this thing looks like it's Kira Knightley <laughs> Kira Knightley. <laughs> that big job. Thank you so much for uh, for helping us with this. Um, but its eyes were the most distinctive feature. They were yellow where the whites would be, but not a sickly yellow, a dark yellow, as that of a black cat, and their irises were orange, almost like burning fire beneath them. It continued to stare at the intruder, baring its teeth at him, which was sharp and jagged. The man seemed to be petrified as he faced down the creature. For a while, neither one seemed to move. Finally, something seemed to awaken in the man as he quickly lunged at the creature. He tried stabbing it with its knife, but it simply moved out the way. Then, as the man was about to slash at its head, the creature swung its clawed hand at his and knocked the knife from his grasp. The creature let out a dark uh, sorry, the creature let out a dark growl before it pounced on top of him and began to mercilessly attack the man. I quickly covered Bella's eyes before turning myself away. All I could hear was the man screaming and growling from the creature. Soon the screaming stopped and everything went quiet. I stiffened with fear as the creature slowly turned its gaze to us. Before they were full of hate and anger, his eyes, but as I looked into them now, they were filled with sadness. I was greatly confused but did not move from my spot. Max! Bella cried. She ran over and wrapped her little arms around the creature's neck. Bella! I called out but she ignored me. Then to my astonishment, the creature gently wrapped its arms around Bella. I felt my heart stop when it had my daughter in its arms. What's going to happen now? But it never made a move of any sorts. It just held my daughter in its arms. Then it looked up at me with bright yellow eyes. The look it gave me wasn't at all what I was expecting. What did this creature have to be afraid of? It then looked down at Bella before closing its eyes. Bella, it is time. Bella cocked her head to one side. Huh? Max must go. Oh my God, this is devastating. No, no, I don't want you to go. She hugged his neck once more, holding on tightly. I'm sorry, I can't stay anymore. But Mummy will let you stay. I know she will. I don't have to be like, hang on a minute. It's a fucking creature that looks like Kira yeah. Knightley. Not a chance. <laughs> Bella, let go. I said just above a whisper. My throat was dry. No, he's my friend. I love him. Bella, the creature said. Max loves you. Be a good girl. Then the creature slowly stood up at full height. I covered Bella's eyes despite her protest as it picked the body and tossed it out the window. I fucking love Max. Great, isn't he? Um, it then did the same thing with the other body in the closet before slowly climbing out of the window. Goodbye, he said. With that, he jumped from the window and into the backyard. Bella and I quickly climbed on the bed to look out the window to see him making his way towards the woods with the two bodies. He tossed them over the fence and climbed over himself. The police soon arrived after that. Turns out one of the neighbours saw them break into the house from across the street and called the authorities. I didn't know what to tell them, so I just said I managed to fight them off before they fled into the woods as they arrived on scene. Oh, so Max has taken the bodies mm -hmm. into the thing. Mm -hmm. He kept asking how I was able to hold them off, but all, uh, all, all I said was that everything happened so fast that I just couldn't remember. After that, I went up to the attic for the first time since moving there. What I found was astonishing. There was a large nest of fabric, sticks and stuffings all packed, neat to, uh, neat, all packed neatly in the far end of the attic. He'd been living here all this time. Bella slept in our room for weeks after that. My husband thought it was because she was too afraid to sleep alone, but I knew it wasn't. She was sad that her friend had gone from her life. It's been years since that day and we've all been living our lives like normal. Bella's now in high school making so many new friends. She was captain of the lacrosse team and a sure win for a scholarship. I was so proud of her. I had continued to be a stay-at-home mom, but not a day went by that I didn't think about what happened that day. Max had saved both mine and my daughter's lives. I doubted I'd ever see him again, but part of me wished I would so that I could thank him for everything he did for us, for what he did for our daughter. One night as I was about to set the table for dinner I received a call from my husband who told me he was going to be coming home late from work Oh God! I thanked him and continued setting up the table but with only two plates Just then my daughter who was in the backyard practising her lacrosse opened the back door Your father's going to be late home tonight I told her She nodded but she was looking at me nervously Hey mom, since dad is coming home late do you mind if I invite a friend over? It's a little short notice I said but sure, who is it? 
Bala smiled before taking a step to the side. I think you'll remember him. She said. She looked down. <laughs> I can't fucking forget. And motioned her hand forward. It's okay. My eyes widened as a long grey hand slowly appeared from around the corner. I looked at my daughter, who was looking back at me nervously. I slowly removed my hand from my mouth, showing my daughter a wide smile with teary eyes. Of course, I said, I'll set another plate. Oh my God! I, I'm like welling up. I'm and you getting can't a bit see, emotional. But I'm very emotional. <laughs> I don't think your eyes are capable of creating tears. No, they tears are. It's, it's actually not very How, good for my uh, what a healing process. That I didn't see that coming. I'll be honest. No, not from the beginning. I was like Max. Is and it's, it's Max like a it, like a. A guardian angel, but like looks like a demon. But yeah. it's, it's all about how, like, a yeah. you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Maybe. Like, well, I think it's just a bit of misdirection, doesn't it? We think Max is going to be very scary. But it's it's Max be is supernatural, right? Max is definitely supernatural. I mean, have you ever seen Kira Knightley <laughs> with long grey arms and legs and eye, fire in her eyes? <laughs> no. That's all she has when she's at audition for a part she really wants. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was oh, great. How cute. Oh, emotional. I know. Lovely I know. demon Max. I know. Do you think that's sincere enough for the TikTokers? <laughs> oh, cute. I love that. Oh, well done. That was fucking Adorbs. great. Adorbs. 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 I mean, it wasn't very scary in the end, was it? It, uh, it was Home Invasion I'm not joking Home Invasion is terrifying like that film I think it's about the, the woman who's deaf who can't <gasps> uh, hush it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life it's scary for a bit and then it just gets a bit samey but it is fucking terrifying I, I, do you know what I, The I really Strangers is the worst one. I regret the day I ever watched that film The Strangers never seen it <gasps> I've shown you a picture of it before you where have. the man's in the background with the little face on Oh, horrible. Fucking grim. Okay, have you got a story for me? I do, actually. No, um, it's weird how all of these slightly connect. They've all been in the woods. Yeah. And even the Creep of the Week was something about woods. No, the, this is this connects a little bit. It's very strange. Very okay. weird. Okay. Um, bear with me. Are you ready for a story, Hannah? So ready. Okay. <clears throat> Hi all, I'm Matt. Almost 10 years ago, I was in a relationship with this guy, I'll call him Craig for anonymity, who claimed he had a spirit that had been following him around since early childhood. According to Craig, it never caused any physical harm. It just clung to him and would occasionally reveal itself in bizarre ways. Craig's family was apparently very aware of this and believed it, claiming to have witnessed numerous bizarre occurrences over the years, all of which happened whenever Craig was around. Honestly, I didn't believe this for a second. Not at all. And because I didn't believe it, it felt like a red flag. Why would he make up something so random and bizarre and share it with me so out of the blue when nothing had warranted it? I don't know, people are weird. Yeah, and also, like, it's not a red flag, him just being like, I think I have a spirit attached to me. You'd be like, okay, it's, no. a, bit, it's a bit kooky. It's a bit, it's a it's bit a, off the I, fucking I, wall, isn't I, it? I, I would obviously love that. I'd be like, if you said tell that me more. with your current attire on. <laughs> yeah, you'd run a mark. I've got a spirit around. Run, <laughs> run for the hills. Um, but being in my early 20s at the time, I chose to ignore it because he was great and he seemed so normal otherwise. I suppose I eventually chose to believe that he genuinely believed, which was preferable to the idea that he would maintain such a lie for so long just to unsettle me. Still, I pulled a Dana Scully and reasoned that all the strange events he had experienced throughout his life must have had reasonable explanations. One night, Craig was staying over at my place. This was actually the first time we'd ever spent an entire night together. Cute. We all know what's going to happen mm -hmm. there. Banging. Banging. We talked, made future plans, made out and listened to music. Before, before we knew it, it was 2am. And this was around the time something really strange happened. We were both sitting on the floor of my bedroom, backs against the far wall opposite my bedroom door, looking for music videos to watch on my laptop, when three loud, fast knocks came from the door. <laughs> oh, you're going to say three loud farts. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was so startled because it was extremely late, and the only other person present in the house at the time was my mum, who had went to sleep hours ago and only ever got up to use the bathroom. She certainly never knocked on my door at such a late hour, especially if I had company over. I silently questioned if I had imagined the knocks because it was late and I was feeling pretty tired, but no, because when I looked over at Craig, he was also looking at the door. 
This is the part where I imagine a lot of readers will... <laughs> I've had brain fart. Uh, this is the part where I imagine a lot of readers will decide the story's fake, but hey, I'm going to stay true to my experience, so here it goes. Before I'm about to call out to my mum, I hear a very angry male voice call my name, similar to how an angry father might shout at their child for breaking something valuable. It took Craig and I several minutes to finally muster up the courage to stand and creep over to the door. Before that, we'd comically stayed pressed against the wall, silently staring at the door and occasionally glancing at each other. I pressed my ear against the door and didn't hear anything, so I eventually opened it. But not before retrieving a golf club from my closet and I saw nothing. Smart. Just a normal dark hallway. Craig and I proceeded to check every spot in the house even opening closet doors and found nothing. While we did this, I remember feeling like eyes were burning into me, as if someone was angrily watching and judging my every move. It had given me goosebumps, but because we didn't find anyone, I shrugged away that feeling. When Craig and I got into bed shortly after, I expressed feeling very creeped out, naturally. Craig nonchalantly replied something to the effect of, I told you, I have a spirit that follows me around. I'd been really unnerved by his reply. He said it a little too matter-of-factly for my liking. Fast forward several weeks when Craig is sleeping over at my place again. We were hanging out in the kitchen shortly after midnight when Craig received a call from his sister. He decided to step out into the backyard for the call. It's worth noting that the backyard connected to the kitchen via a large sliding glass door. A bit like your one and your Oh, house. yeah so I could see him at all times, so long as I remained in the kitchen and he stayed by the door. It's also worth noting that the kitchen sink had a large window directly above it, a window that looked out to the side of the house. I mention this because I decided to wash dishes while Craig took the call. While washing dishes, I will while washing dishes, I alternated between looking out the window in front of me and glancing to my right, where I could see Craig leaning against the glass door as he conversed with his sister. When I got to a particularly dirty dish, I stopped looking out the window. Oh, your dirty dish. <laughs> and to my right, so I could focus... Uh, sorry. When I got to a particularly dirty dish, I stopped looking out the window and to my right, so I could focus on getting the dish clean. When I achieved this, I looked back up at the window and immediately took a couple of steps back. Oh, no. What's it going to be? Standing right outside the window was Craig, who was now smiling at me. And I don't mean an ordinary smile. I'm talking a highly exaggerated grin. Like that? Mm -hmm, with lots of teeth showing. Eyes blown wide open. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> physically against that. my DNA. I, I could, but I've got sunglasses well, on. Hang on. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah. Stop it. If you've seen the recent horror movie Smile, then you know exactly what that, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very similar to that. After I collected myself, I laughed and shook my head at Craig before gesturing at him to knock it off and come back inside. But he stayed completely motionless. Oh, my God. Eyes still burning into mine, his grin never faltering. He didn't even blink. After another 10 seconds or so went by, I began feeling very unsettled. Mind you, I'd still been under the impression that he was just trying to make me feel uncomfortable via his version of a joke. So I was mostly unnerved that he would commit to the gag for so long more than anything else. I certainly didn't consider it could be anything else, even after the previous incident. Out of nowhere, while I was still looking directly at Craig through the window, I heard the sliding glass door open from my right. When this happened, I looked away from the window and I saw Craig coming back inside from the backyard. When I looked back at the window, the smiling Craig was gone. Oh, no. I want to make it crystal clear. Double Craig. Unless Craig had secret teleportation powers I didn't know about, there was no way he could have moved from the window to the sliding glass door while I was staring right at him. Double Craig. It, wouldn't, it would have been impossible. When I told Craig what I'd experienced, he said, I believe you. Something like that has happened before. Craig just grabbed my hand and led me to my bedroom when I felt eyes burning into my back the whole way up there, up until Craig shut my bedroom door. Even then, after we got into bed, I could still sense something standing on the other side of the door. I'm not going to talk about it. It's just like I saw somebody outside that was grinning inanely at me. 
and it wasn't you. Maybe yeah. he's waiting to go behind the door to be like, this okay. is... Um, we split up lo- lo- We split up not long after oh. due to something unrelated, believe it or not. And nothing strange has happened since, almost a full decade later. I never feel like I'm being watched, nor have I ever seen anything strange. I've had other bizarre experiences, all of which occurred prior to meeting Craig, but nothing was ever so blatant. I still Ugh. admit that I'm a sceptic, but whenever I try to come up with a reasonable explanation for those experiences, I always come up empty. Spooky. I typically forget about these encounters, but this time of the year, Halloween, naturally brings the memories back, even though they happened at a completely different time of the year. Wow. That's horrible. Isn't it? Imagine. If I saw you, to be honest, if I did look out the window and you were just there grinning, I'd just say you were being a dickhead. I would smash the window and lunge at you if you did that to me. Okay, well, I'm going to do it and we'll see. I would be so scared. I would be... Even if you know it's me. The thing is... Don't you ever do that to me through glass. Don't, I don't want to look at that. I that hate, is scary. I have a weird thing about eyes when people like poke around in their eyes. A lot my, of poke around in the eye. My mum does that a lot. So what? she'll just like pull a bit of the, you know, pull your eye down. Then she'll be like poke around for a contact lens oh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking perfume I like, she's lost. I like touching all the bones in my face like that. So I can imagine that I've got like, you're it's weird quite, that you know you're, you've got a skull. Uh, you're quite um, bad for it, by the way. I've told you this before. You so, you poke around in your eyes and I go, when? Hannah, stop it. Oh, do I? Yeah. I don't you're not aware of me probably saying that to you, but you do it no. quite a bit and I can't I can't even look. I do like to touch my eyeball every now and again. Yeah, you do, I know. Just because I find it, it quite... It's like, if you do that now, all around your, all around your face... You can feel you, you can feel your skull and it's I've really been, weird. I've been microneedled. I'm not allowed to touch my face. Okay. Uh, that was a great story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You. Um, you're not going to be able to see your face if this carries on anymore <laughs> okay. because you are... Well, your arteries are fucking Your blocked. arteries are... Okay. This is from Cheyenne. It's Creep of the Week. Creep of the Week. Creep, don't, of, the don't, creep of the Week. Okay, I won't say your surname just in case you don't want me to. Um, okay, I have a true story that actually happened to me a few months ago. Backstory, I moved out of my grandmother's house when I turned 18. I just recently turned 20 and I live with my boyfriend. He's been working the night shift for a year now and we've been together for four years. Well, one night he was at work. I was asleep at 3 a.m. I heard screaming in my ear saying, Shane, get the fuck up! Get your fucking ass up! Whoa! It was my dad's voice. He lives on the other side of town around by my grandma. And I was home alone. I woke up from that, cried, opened the bedroom door to let our cat Amy in. That is a cool name for a cat. Mm, And did not go back to sleep for the rest of the night. I told my dad after it happened and he turned white as a ghost. I don't know who it was or why they were there screaming in my ear, but I haven't heard it since just get strange feelings like I'm not home alone anymore when I actually am. Also, I'm from America, Oklahoma to be exact, but I love y'all's part. I listen to it every day and night and I laugh so hard. Keep up the great work. I love you both. Oh, oh, thank you, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. That is creepy as shit. If you have any more aggressive ghosts, please do let us know. Are you sure she hasn't recorded her dad's voice as an alarm clock? Get oh. the fuck up. Yeah, I need to do. I keep sleeping through my alarm, so I might need. Do you? Yeah. I um actually I'm sleeping really badly of late. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <I'm> <laughs> yeah, I know you are having an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I keep waking up at four. Yes. I yes. keep waking up at four. Four. Four like, thirty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We are fucking. Mm, there's telepathy. Okay. Can I read another creep of the week? Because I can. think um this one is. I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna prepare your game. Fucking over um, Go. No, I need your full attention. I'm like a kid who needs um, mum to look at her jumping in the pool. I found that on the floor. What's that? Louis Theroux's strap. What's that? I don't know, it's not mine. It's a bit creepy. Um, no, Hannah, I need your full attention. Hello, I need attention. Go. <laughs> no, you're about to look at a bag. Oh, hey, Hannah. <laughs> oh, my God. So you got new sunglasses oh, on. I don't know how You're that actually happens. blind now. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Please, no one come for us. She's not being ableist. She has, <laughs> they are, she has got med- medical reasons for wearing them. I do. Yeah. Blind? <laughs> um. Where's your dog? 
<laughs> You're my dog. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, I was asking for that one, really, wasn't I? Um, okay, um, I'm Go gonna ahead. do. I'm gonna do another creep of the week because I really enjoyed this one. Hit me. Um, this one is from Mallory. Oh, I love that name. Isn't that a wonderful name? It's out of uh, Mallory it, Towers. Called, yeah, and Grace and Frankie. Mallory. Oh, Mallory. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Hello. I'm a nurse who has worked in the emergency department for several years. I've always believed there has to be something out there that's spiritual as some things you just can't explain, like a patient talking to a dead family member days before they die. Anyway, I want to share a, let's just say, weird experience that happened to me on night shift at the hospital. It was just after New Year and I was on a night shift. I work on a busy acute unit, which is part of A&E, so relatives have 24-hour access. I had a patient in Bay 1 who was very poorly and likely not going to make the night. I had struggled to contact her neighbour, who was down as next of kin. It appeared she had no family. She'd been assessed and the decision had been made to send her to another ward that was less busy and far from the busy emergency hustle. Bay 1 remained empty after that. Only two beds are in that bay. Later that night, as we're sat documenting at the nurse's station, the buzzer sounds for Bay 1. I look at the other nurse. Odd. I walk down the corridor. Directly ahead of me is the entrance doors to the ward, locked with a key card access only. I enter Bay 1 to my left. It's dark and cold. I shine my pen torch in the bay. The room is barely lit as I walk to the furthest bed to turn the buzzer off. Turning it off as I turn around for a moment, I thought I saw someone laying in the other bed. My heart pounding, I leave the room and shake it off. I tell myself it's dark and there's shadows, nothing more than being tired on a night shift. Back at the nurse's station, the buzzer for bay one sounds again. Hell no. I grab another colleague and we go in together. This time, the ensuite light was on. They're activated by scents and don't go out if there's movement in there. The door was shut, but from under the door, we could both see a shadow. Oh. I was scared, but my instinct told me to open the door just in case it was a confused patient. No one was in there. Quickly turning the buzzer off, we left bay one, a little shaken. The buzzer sounded more times and we all were getting scared. A little while later, a porter comes down to the ward for a chat. They start to moan about the ward I had sent my poorly patient to. They keep calling us to go check bay six as the buzzer keeps going off and someone was in the bathroom, the porter moaned. No one's there, though the patient died and the bay is empty, he said again. I shuddered. I had sent my patient to bay six. Oh no. I don't know how many times I've been up there to check it out. The nurses are scared, he said. I went to say about our experience when the crash call sounds. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the crash call sounds adult cardiac arrest, mortuary, adult cardiac arrest, mortuary. The walkie talkie sounded. A team of doctors, porters, and other healthcare professionals are assigned crash call duty and have to respond no matter what, where the. Um, have to respond no matter where the emergency is in the hospital. Shouldn't they already be dead if they're in the mortuary? Well, <sighs> okay. We all, uh, did they say mortuary? We all said gobsmacked. The porter responded immediately and headed off to the mortuary as he was on crash call, the poor sod. I continue my work. A little while later, the buzzer goes for the main doors. Someone was wanting to be let onto the ward. We have a camera intercom system. Hi, can I help you? I asked to the man with short brown hair and a shadow over his face where I couldn't see him clearly as he looked at the camera. I'm here to get my mum, he said flatly. OK, one moment, I said to him. Pausing, I turned to the nurse in charge. Do we have an A&E discharge? I asked. No, not that I've been told, she replied. Now, it wouldn't be the first time A&E have failed to say a patient was going home, and yes, it happens at any time of night. I look back at the camera. He stood there, almost eerie. OK, come to the desk, I say, buzzing him in. I poke my head around the corner and see him walking through the double doors. A bag is in his hand, his head down. I turn away from him to just close up the notes I was writing and turn back to greet him. He's gone. Now, he had come through the doors and disappeared. The only place he could have gone was Bay 1. 
I walk quickly down to bay one, open the doors, and I'm met by darkness and an empty bay. The hairs on the back of my neck stood tall. Where did he go? I run back to the nurse's station. Did you see that man? I stammered. I heard him, but I didn't see him, another nurse replied. I had an uneasy feeling. We searched the ward and he was nowhere to be seen. It was just our sleeping patients. I was shaken up by the experience. A little while later, the porter comes back from the crash call. All the bodies had to be recertified as dead by two doctors, he said, shocked and a little shaken from his ordeal. The mortuary assistant had called the crash call as he heard knocking from a drawer and breathing. When we got there, we all listened and we all heard it too. The breathing sounded terrifying, deep, raspy breaths. Everyone had to be checked, but they were all dead, but we could still hear it, the porter said, scared. In the end, they called the chaplain from the hospital chapel to come and bless the mortuary and the noises stopped. Just like that. I was shocked. I told him of our night and the strange man. The phone rang for me and it was the patient's neighbour, the one who I'd sent up to Bay 6 who had died. Sorry to call late, but I was wondering about how Jane is doing. Uh, I've just made that name up. I should probably... (laughs) Should I just call her Jane? What? Uh, I'll just call her Jane. Uh, Sorry to call late, but I was wondering about Jane and how she's doing. She has no family and... You see, her son recently died and she was on her own, the neighbour reported. My blood ran cold as his face appeared in my mind. I'm here to get my mum, he'd said to me. Oh my God. Now I wonder, had it been her in Bay 1 and then in Bay 6 on the other ward and then finally the mortuary, her final moments in this world, her ghost lost in an unfamiliar hospital environment, And had it been her son who had come to take her wherever it is the dead go. I hope you enjoyed reading my experience. I did. How creepy is that? What a wholesome episode this has been. Oh my word. We've had hero ghosts. We've had cute ghosts. Honestly, but... Oh, it's terrifying. I'm yeah, here to get my mum. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, what are you going to give this? So here's what we're going to do. I know that last time I said I was going to do your love potion. Mm. But listen, we can't take it lightly. This is a very serious thing. I can't have you falling in love with just about anybody. I've got Aww. business to think about. Business. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to use your pendulum. Okay. To, And we're going to figure out we're going to call on the spirits and we're going to find out what ingredients you need for your love potion. Mm. So, and I'm going to make a note of them. But like I sh- we're going to do a spooky shopping list. Vodka. Vodka, yes. yeah. Do you want oh, vodka? my God, it says yes. Um, so I'm going to get a list of what the, all the things that you need in Maybe love we potions. should make me a zombie because that's quite fitting, isn't it? Um, so, first of all, I want you to fitting. ask. So... Um, I look absolutely ridiculous. Anyone watching, okay. I do apologise. I need to make a note. I need to make it. I'll do it on my phone. Okay. My so phones. first of all, I need you to ask the spirits if it is appropriate in your love potion. If these things, co- if these things coincide with you finding the love of your life. So first of all, jasmine flowers. Do you need jasmine flowers? Do you have jasmine flowers? What's it saying? Susan? Will I have jasmine What's flowers? It is that a yes? Do you know what? It's feeling really heavy. Is it? Yeah. Is it's it not moving, moving towards but anything? it's kind of like quivering. Mm. But I have just recently had a coffee, so that could be the caffeine. For fuck's sake. Is it moving towards anything? Do you know anything? what? That's really weird, Hannah. It's moving towards... That is fucking It's actually weird. shaking in your it, hands. No, but I can feel it moving. <laughs> Where's it going to? It's... Oh, this is really weird. Are we having jasmine flowers? Are we not? It's moving to yes, definitely. Fuck, so now I've got to find fucking jasmine. That flowers. was we- honestly, I can feel it. Jesus, it's like <gasps> okay. It next feels one, heavy as fuck. Next one's rose petals. Rose is my middle name. You is it? Do you not know that? Oh, I think I did. Now you've said that. Rose petals. Rose petals. This is sounding like quite a nice potion, actually, isn't it? No worries. Um, okay, so rose petals. Are we go? Are we having rose petals in your in your brew? No. No. No, okay. it's um it's not. Essence of vanilla. What's happening there? 
No, it's feeling very heavy. Is oh, it? it's saying it's saying maybe. Maybe. So I think we're going to say yes to that. Vanilla. Now I really hope that this one's a no. Unicorn hair. Oh, unicorn hair. Yes or no, or maybe or unknown. No, that. it's I a no. Saying, oh, thank God, because no. like, trying to fucking track down a unicorn hair and elephant and castle would have been a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> I bet okay, so would have no, unicorn you out. Hair. no unicorn hair. Um, a cinnamon. Are you going to have Oh my cinnamon? God, it went immediately yes. Oh my God, so it literally you, jerked you to need the left. cinnamon to find love. Oh my, honestly, Hannah, this is jerking all over the place. Okay. It's uh, like beef jerky up in here. Water. Beef jerky, <laughs> fuck's sake. <laughs> Um, beef jerky. Do you need beef jerky in there? <laughs> <laughs> My beef jerky love potion. Is it saying yes or no? It's a no. Uh, I don't know if I believe you, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, hair of the dog. <laughs> Aw, you're my dog. Yeah, well, there you go. Is that a yes? Mm, it's staying firmly in the middle. I think that's a no. Oh, I don't know, you've got to wait. It's no, look. It's, that's a hard no, okay. Yeah, it's a hard water? no. Water? Did we do water? Haven't done water. It's saying maybe. Okay, two more left. Handful of sage. Ooh. What's it saying? Mm, it's saying... No, it's no, nothing. Okay, wow, okay. So you've got one more. This is... God, it's really good. Um, brandy. I'm not joking. This is just jerking all over the shop. What's it saying? Brandy? It's saying... Hang on. Brandy. Brandy. Mm, it's a maybe, it's saying. So I think that's a yes. So that's a shot, at least. Brandy. Okay, so, well, your um, your love potion is going to consist of jasmine flowers, vanilla, cinnamon, water and brandy. That's going to be quite delicious. I think it's going to be great, yeah. <gasps> Some of these we... things I won't be able to find, though, so I will bring... What do we call it? Susie's Special? Susie's, Susie's Sexy. Susie's Sexy Sauce. Mm, for her sauna building. Susie's sexy sauce and <laughs> sauna building, yeah. Oh. Okay, but we have it. I'm very excited. I'm going to do that next time. We're going to do that next time. Yeah, love, love okay. potion. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do uh, tune in next time for Susie's sexy sauce or whatever we'd say. Do you is. want a jump scare? Shall I take them off? Go on. Ah! <laughs> bye, Hans. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye, bye thanks for joining bye, us. Bye, bye, See you bye, next bye. week. I could almost hear the noise then. Yeah, they did a little at the evil piano. 